just teach them. We'll go down and we'll teach them about their endocannabinoid system. We'll talk with nurses. And we really want to get good information out there about how cannabis interacts with your body and what are, a proper dose is. Exactly. And we also are bringing a lot of people in to further on that subject. Like we do a lot of work with Pro Verde. Uh, they're Pro Verde Labs are actually here today. I don't know if they've been over here or not, but we have them coming in and teaching classes and doing basically one-day seminar kind of things and getting the community more informed about where it's going and what testing will actually get for us and things like that. Hmm. Wow. The, um, do you see at a certain point that the medical community in the state will almost be forced to deal with it? Yeah. They're going to learn to love us. <laughs> you're here. You're gonna, we're here. We're here and we want to be helpful. Um, it's just a matter of them recognizing us as a, as a medicinal medicine. It's just a matter of really getting people to realize that pharmaceuticals have a time and a place, but cannabis also has a time and a place. Do you really need to go to Percocet? Do you really need to go to Oxycontin? Or could you maybe do something that's high in THC, something that's high in CBD, something that doesn't have like a, a long list of side effects? And I don't think it's that the man medical, com medical community doesn't want to embrace us. It's I really feel like they have their hands tied because of what they're allowed to do with regulations. It's federally illegal. And a lot of hospitals are um, federally run in some way, shape, or form, yeah, we're funding. Money, so they here. can't, they literally can't, the doctors can't prescribe marijuana. I There's um, one of the places on Cape Cod, the Mashby um, Health Center, they won't. If you, they'll, they've actually started testing people for marijuana and if you test, they'll kick you out of their program because they're state run, because they're federally run. So it's really hard. It's like the doctors want the patients to get the information, but they can only do so much. And in Massachusetts, like Canicare docs, Integrate, they can't tell people where to get medicine. And in Massachusetts, there's nowhere for patients to get medicine. So it's right. really hard. And when we start getting collectives, it's going to be easier because we can start getting more research. We can start showing them. And it's a lot of um, people coming out and saying, hi, my name's Ellen Brown. I smoke marijuana and I'm a good person. We need to change the face of cannabis so that the medical community doesn't see us as some stoners who want to get high. When they think of cannabis, they think of grandma who just got diagnosed or they think of a child with epilepsy or they think of a veteran who just came back with really severe PTSD. That's who we want you to think of, our patients. Yeah, I, it just seems to me there's this, this, this log jam right now. You've got, in Rhode Island, you've got compassion centers, and yet they're still evolving in terms of the referral process. In Massachusetts, you've got a, a referral process that can lead to nowhere yet. Yeah. No and, 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 and you've got politicians debating baseball stadiums. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's tragic and it's pathetic at the same time. It, it, it ceased being funny a few years ago. Uh, and, and yet at the same time, you've got people dying, um, both from opioids or you've got them dying slow, miserable deaths from diseases that can, well, may not be preventable, may not even be fightable, but can at least be manageable. And, you know, it's, these are real people and who don't have the power or the, or the authority to go out and just dictate um, like the elite can. It's, 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 it's pretty frustrating. Yes. It's very frustrating. It's great. I'm so glad you, you guys are wonderful. You're here. You're getting the word out. Like, it starts with change. It just starts with us talking to each other. Mm -hmm. So thank you, guys. You're well, wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming on. I mean, we, um, we do have, we have a couple of elements to the program here. Uh, our listeners have heard this many times before. We have an AM radio show that, that's actually AM and FM radio show, as well as our blog site. So, you know, we invite you to submit to us if you've got announcements or press releases or, or things like that. You know, the the, uh, the address is, uh, I mean, that, that's our advertising solicitation, but <laughs> our press releases, our blog pieces, all of that's free to awesome. the um, to the folks that we're involved in, the folks who are actually making changes on a day to day. So if we can serve as a uh, a platform for you guys to to publicize your cause and to inform people, just just have to let us know. Right. We thank you. We really appreciate it. So thank bye. you so much. Thank you. All right. It's going to be interesting to see the convergence of people that have been displaced by the last economic downturn that are looking to start a whole new career path. And I think we're seeing them go through, quote unquote, cannabis college as a possible alternative to kind of rejigger to the new economy. You mean becoming yet another computer tech or yet another, <laughs> or another barista? Or people that just refuse to work in sales. Ooh, that yeah. job's brutal. Oh. <laughs> Hi, my name is Pat. Hi, Pat. I'm a salesman, yeah. I'm a salesaholic. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs>
Well, that just about concludes our uh, coverage of the Rhode Island Cannabis Convention. Of course, if you missed any portion of this show, if you missed yesterday's broadcast, rifreeradio.org. It'll be up there in podcast form. You can download it to your devices. You can listen to it on the go wherever fine, fine uh, content is available. Don't forget, we are constantly streaming 24 hours of content, rifreeradio.org. Tune in anytime. You can hear the Tony Jones Show, the Coalition, My Night Out Radio, the soon-to-be midday podcast. It's... Uh, it's all streaming there for you at rifreeradio.org. And, of course, click on the blog content if you are not enjoying, not listening to streaming music constantly like some of us are, myself included. There's always the blog content. You can check that out. Rhode Island Free Radio.org has a blog. The Coalition at coalitionradio.us has guest bloggers on there. The uh, The content for you we really do strive to take an omni media approach to all of this and we uh, of course appreciate your support already getting feedback about yesterday's live broadcast which i posted up mere moments after we were done broadcasting and of course you'll be able to find this one in podcast form but i'd be remiss if i didn't leave you with a little bit more uh local music to wrap things up we're going to hear from a great young local band called colorblind and this track is called Abducted. Yes, this does conclude our coverage of the first ever Rhode Island Cannabis Convention. We hope to see you again next year. We hope to be here next year broadcasting for you. Here is a little colorblind, some local music now as we wrap things up. It's Abducted right here on RI Free Radio, rifreeradio.org. Have a great night, everybody. <laughs> 